Hello everyone, and today we sit down with Doug and Jakob. So, I haven't seen Jakob in about a 12 month. Uh, we ch he changed jobs, lost contact for a little while, went out for him once or twice, I saw him around Bristol, but that was pretty much it. Um, and obviously, as you know, we've, we've, we've seen Doug before. Uh, <laughs> so, what is this about? Well, we talk about, God, so many different things in this. Once again, mental health does come up, as it is important to myself and Doug. Uh, we also talk about the porn industry, we talk about nurses, we talk about mental health, we talk about uh, Jakob's heart attack at a young age of 19. Um, talk about so so many different things they just have a couple of things oh ghosts as well paranormal um talk about doug's cat uh yeah so loads of stuff there is swearing throughout folks once again this is a a let loose chat so there is going to be quite a lot of language used that some of you may not appreciate so this is your warning um so yeah there we are well i'm gonna shut up we're gonna jump straight in and i think um yeah at the start i'm trying to get yeah i'm trying to get Jakob to pick up his cup of coffee Enjoy. Like an angel. Yeah, well, I would say that you're able to. Well, yeah, I, 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 I want to be in the middle. I can. No, I don't want to be in the middle. Do you want to grab your coffee? Look, yes. grab your coffee. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll come and sit here because all I do is everyone knows who I look, what I look like, <laughs> but nobody knows you guys. Or well, everybody knows you. Somebody knows you. How do they know you? Why did the cat just close the door? That is the creepiest thing I've ever seen. Oh, she loves it. The I cat just pushed the door. I don't want to see you yawning, but the cat just pushed the door. That is very creepy. Maybe you knew ghosts are coming. Do you believe in ghosts? Yeah. Of course I do. Maybe I believe in ghosts, I believe in UFOs. Not, you know, I'm not, don't get me wrong, I don't like 100% turn around and, and, you know, the slightest noise when I'm the only person in the house, I'm like, it's a ghost. You know, I, I, I do believe there are. There I just are. think it's an old build from my 1655, and maybe things are just. Well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, the floors, floors retract and. Um, floors move when houses cool down, when houses heat up, buildings creak and they creak. move and stuff. And I just yeah. think it's ghosts. Do you? One hundred percent. As a ghost. Yeah, like, as oh, a ghost. Landlord say, mate, mate, mate. What was going on? Mate, ghost broke the flash. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the, the world's best excuse to a landlord, wouldn't it? Why haven't you paid the rent? Ghost used my debit card. Yeah. yeah <laughs> ghost ordered a load of shit on Amazon. How long do you think I, he could put up with this? Oh, a couple of months. I think you could you could get a couple of months of day today. <laughs> you have to you have to like, keep an eye on what you're buying though, because like you know if the ghosts spending money, you can't get, you can't go buying things that would be like anti-ghost or anything. <laughs> so like oh there's a ghost using my Amazon account. What to buy Ghostbusters on DVD? I want to tell you, you absolute to fucking tell you. absolute fucking masochist ghost. What's going on here? I was going to say, <laughs> what if they buy toys? Are they not going to buy any Ghostbusters toys like yeah. the proton pack or anything like yeah. that? Or could they buy toys because the toys don't actually hurt the ghosts? Um, they could watch Ghostbusters. Yeah, just buy the merch. Yeah. But like support the but like, merch. They but Ghostbusters. If Disney you're watching, if you're watching. If you're watching Ghostbusters as a ghost, it's going to be like a really weird thing. You know, like, you like the merch thing. <laughs> hey, I could just ghost, see a ghost by the put merch. a t-shirt on and wondering why it's falling off. Like, what the fuck? What the? What the? I'm spreading my head. Sorry. I've been a ghost for 60 years and I still haven't changed never. my fucking clothes. I just want to wear something else. Yeah. I didn't even like these shorts. You can see. <laughs> you can see a husband and wife old ghost shopping in Primark. Don't get the belt. Get the braces. <laughs> <laughs> I like the idea of ghosts watching like Ghostbusters though, like because like we've got like certain things that we watch that like terrify us and that kind yeah, of thing. Like in the eighties, yeah. they did Threads with. Oh that, my god, BBC like a, Threads. A, a drama about um a, a sort of um. What is it? A nuclear war nuclear and the fallout war. after it, and it was yeah. like genuinely terrifying. And it was sort of put on the TV as a drama, but also a case of like, be careful oh, what really? you do, kind of thing. Like this is a warning. Like I can imagine ghosts actually watching Ghostbusters. Like this is a really long public service announcement. <laughs> what the public service announcements from the eighties, or have, you know, watch them back on YouTube. Yeah, that music. Um, the, um, oh, there's happening. Oh, that's that, horrible. There's that mad one. That's that's. Absolutely fucking mental, and I think it was um, handmade films. The film company was set up with like George Harrison from yeah, the Beatles yeah. and some other people, and they did that absolutely mental one with the um, K 
kids jumping into like the little power unit and like frying and, and that kind of thing. The camera would turn on the kid yeah. be black on the floor. Yeah. Do not play in your wife. Absolutely mental. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, it's like nowadays like you put on a public service announcement, it's like, don't do that. Kind of thing. Whereas back then it was like, you will fucking die. <laughs> yeah. like, was it one of the people they kicked a board, didn't they? And it went over. Yeah, and, and one, gets, one of the boys was like, don't go and get it, leave it. He's like, nah, it's fine, mate, you'll be all right. <laughs> and then he fucking died. <laughs> yeah, um, that was proper shocking, though, wasn't it? I was like, oh shit, don't play near power. There's like the train ones as well, like, now. use the train crossings you properly. You just see, like, you see, like, kids, like, walk onto the train track, and then you hear, like, and then it just goes black. I've lost a lot of football. You know health, <laughs> health and safety um, videos. Mm. I've seen a like really old one uh, for a warehouse. Oh, they, they have like Tarantino there. <laughs> just like, blood everywhere. Yeah, Don't put like, your hand in the saw. Don't walk in front of a, like the forklift. And I'm like, mm, okay, fair. And they're like, because this happened. <laughs> And I'm like, that, it's like, hmm. You can just see it's somebody offset with a tomato, with a huge beef steak tomato. Boom. To be fair, a lot I, of it. I do, I do actually know Give someone. Give it more! I do actually know someone quite close oh, God. to me personally. Um, and I won't say who, because obviously it's going to be online. But they did get their pelvis crushed by a forklift truck. Like, yeah. just well. in a random accident. You have to be positive. I, don't, I think they were actually being safe as well, so there is kind of like a reason to do it, but I think the adverts themselves, like, they've kind of gone like, hmm, horror movies are a big property right now. <laughs> yeah. Let's go down that route. How about some look like a blend of, oh, a porn industry looks like a good idea, because all the chicks there, they're like really, like real. The it's clothing that is just not there. No, it's not at all. Can, you can, 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 can I get a like, like, training video like for the porn industry? Just like so he is the so training so video. So <laughs> like, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> video. <laughs> We just crazy. like flash up the word AIDS repeatedly, <laughs> and then there's just this woman in a nurse's outfit, like a sexy nurse. Uh, going, yes. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm not in the box. <laughs> not today. Jure. Uh, what? <laughs> like, why, why do I imagine myself just being the like? It's a sad boy, definitely. <laughs> I'm sad. Jakob is sad. Yeah. <laughs> Please, do make Jakob sad, for your own sake. <laughs> and every time you see me either, sad, and you're like, sad Jakob. And you're like, nah, remember Jakob, make him sad. <laughs> you know what, I'm I sad. think it would pay quite handsomely if you were to dress up in a nurse's outfit and just come on to do public service and announce what's the porn. If they pay well, like, I would do it. Rip off your shirt and then go, no, no. Slow motion. Not today, ladies. If anything, I'd give you £2.30. The winks. Actually, I think I've got £2.30 on me. I'm going to nurse this outfit, though. <laughs> the mm. silence is disturbing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hang on, Doug. Should we talk about this? <laughs> just trying to remember. He's scanning his wardrobe He's right like, now. I got one. No, I can't say that to the boys. <laughs> so it's man. Actually, yeah, I, I got that one. I found that one. Yeah, I got that one. Do I have a nurse, though? Mm. I have a Batman. What did you say? Your second one? What was the second one? Farmer. Farmer, yeah. Do you remember the IKEA ad where Welcome to Your Own House? And the couple, uh, she is chasing him. And he's dressed like a piggy, and the kids come home and they see her with like, like a farmer and him with a piggy face, and they look at them. It's like very cringe, just like now. It's very cringe, and our kids like get your own place. It was like, mm, yeah. well, I have no idea what that is. I've, I've, I've seen loads of it's Ikea old, it's old. Very, oh, is it and it's banned. Ikea? No, it's is it, banned. What's banned? Yeah, it was I've banned. Never, it's gonna be on YouTube. We've got to look for that. It's on YouTube. It'll be around somewhere. Yeah. 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 I've got to see that. One. Going back to like. Going back to like nurses' outfits and stuff, have you ever noticed like with porn, like when they do like the God. nurses' outfits, like they don't look like nurses? Because if you go to the hospital and see a nurse, like she's just wearing that blue thing and like everything's covered, like every time I see like, and it's not common anymore, but like it used to be, <laughs> every time you see like a porn video and it's like naughty nurses and stuff, I always find myself there going like, they look more like Nazis. Like they look like they're in the SS because they've got like their little red cross on the arm, like, <laughs> swastika armband. And that kind of thing. You're just kind of like. Surely that's just nurses this, from around the world, though. There's different. They, 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 well, that's the universal nurse. That's the universal. I, I, universal I see something like that, but it's just because they look like they're they're in the SS so much. I'm like, she is a really naughty nurse. <laughs> I'm not on. I'm not cool with this. I'm not cool with it. I just lost my leg. Can I get some privacy, please? <laughs> Who are you? Are you really a nurse? Do you know what am I doing? It's like. 
Phil half really, leg is there like feel really bad for that circumcised guy in ward number two. Oh my god <laughs> this is going so dark so <laughs> She's like very chewy. <laughs> <laughs> very chewy. Mm. Porn, porn is a strange thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's the most random just, stuff that you can say. You should get on a t-shirt. Success. <laughs> Success. <laughs> porn is the weirdest thing <laughs> ever. No, like it's this. Just, the porn the, the, is the weirdest yes. thing the, ever. The purpose of porn, right, is everyone knows what the purpose of porn is, right? Yeah, but I'm sure there are people. Metal. In that yeah, industry, like, who are a bit kind of like, oh, there needs to be some art as well. But who, like, watching porn has ever just sat there and gone, like, I need a plot line? Like, you don't. Really <laughs> do <that. laughs> I always wait for them to get married. Like, they never do. N not a single porn movie. Well, wouldn't all. it be weird if the pool guy came around to clean your pool? Then the pool guy does the woman who owns the pool, and then they get married immediately. It would have to be a drive through marriage. You know what happened there? <laughs> no pun intended there. <laughs> Good one. But I just realised it would be fantastic <laughs> because then they'll get married and then they'll find someone else to clean their pool. I should be a director. Like, uh -huh. you know what, maybe this is... Maybe they get this married is, yeah, and then you have another guy cleaning their pool. Maybe we could corner the market on that. Like, they're porn movies, but they're also actual romances. Like, you know, it's not yeah, just filthy that, fucking... That's, like, surely that's a Mills and Boone book then. It is Mills and Boone, isn't it? Yeah, but the thing with books is they don't move by themselves. So if you <laughs> then... Well, not, you know. not normally unless there's a ghost there. Is someone writing <laughs> yeah, this... Yeah. Full circle, bitches! Nice I'm done. <laughs> is someone writing this idea down? Do we have a notepad just to write... We, we are on camera, so we can come back to that. That's our notepad. You can it. We run the business. Mm. Actually, I'm going to press record. Oh, well, that's a point. Because if not... Then this is going to be quite interesting. Oh yeah, I have. There we are. So, the porn so now showcasing high levels of professionalism. <sighs> He'll cut it. He'll cut it. <laughs> He'll make it look like we we're talking about how porn is a bad influence society and and. Ooh, you know, interesting. It is yeah. bad. It is very bad. It can be quite porn dangerous, can't it? Bad. There are people who have developed like porn addictions and stuff. It, it, it's actually ruined their instant lives. Instant gratification there can be is a total boosted. disconnect. Mm. I think, in the way that men look at women and women look at men. Yeah. If they watch porn enough and then look at a woman, or if that woman watches porn enough and looks at a man. Because a lot of what's done in porn, like, looks great on camera, yeah. but doesn't feel right. Yes. Yeah, you can't even replicate yeah, yeah, exactly. that. And so that kind of thing. Yeah. So if you're like watching enough porn that it starts to sink into your mind that these are the things I want to try, you become, even though on the surface it just looks like, oh, it's just something from the porn movie, it becomes a lot more deviant yeah. than you realise. And if that becomes your norm, then it's a weird kind of... And that's not necessarily a bad thing for everyone because some people are deviant sexually and that's not a bad thing per se if that's what people are into. Like you. But... <laughs> what? But like no shame, like, you know. Like you. It does it does kind of limit things, and if you're already in a relationship, yeah. it can be quite damaging. Absolutely, to that. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It's you know, yeah. I really like a bit of respect to those people there that are doing that. It, I'm quite fit. Some might say very, but so, yeah, know, it's Doug doesn't think so. You know that it is hard fucking so. work. <laughs> I'm, uh, <laughs> it's hard. Hang on, whoa. hang on, hang on. It's hard work looking that good. Is that what you're saying? No, is that what you're saying? No, it's not true. <laughs> it's not true. The the thing is, you know, it's like people. I'm get... obviously like constantly down the gym with these little uh, no, arms. That's fine. Yeah, exactly. Check, out, yeah. check out the absolute lack of muscle. On that. I like how you just <laughs> squeeze it in your wrist. <laughs> right I'm, right I'm waiting because the old yakker. When I when there we go. <laughs> the old yakker will walk into the room and go, "Hey, abs. Have you seen my abs?" <laughs> I have, no, I have, this, this is the bulking at, um, at the last uh, Christmas the party I had. I'm bulking. I lost 100 kilograms. At the last Christmas party I had, like, someone told him to what get What the fuck? His, someone told him to get his chest out. Him. So, he, like, he, he was just like, Ooh. yeah, showed him it. Obviously, it's, like, quite ripped and stuff. And I was just like, check out this pasty thing. <laughs> <laughs> and he makes his belly yeah. even bigger. He's like, right, I have a six-pack. <laughs> he's got a six-pack. i got a fucking crisp pack, right? <laughs> <laughs> the match, the match, the perfect match. <laughs> Yeah, I always remember that. I mean, it doesn't matter where we were, you just always used to walk in and be like, Hi everyone's going, whoop! <laughs> Hello, how's your day? Have you seen my eyes? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. But I'm honest about it, it's fun. 
Yeah. Not usually you get in the workplace and someone's showing their abs. Like. <laughs> no, that was the first thing I noticed when I met you. I was like, Alex came and sat next to me and said, oh, have you met the new guy? I was like, I haven't got a clue who the new guy is. And he's like, oh, it, 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 you'd, you'd see him. And it's like, oh, right, okay, yeah, he stands up. Okay, no problem, yeah. And then I walked into the canteen at lunchtime, you're there with your abs going, do, 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 do. Yeah, like, <laughs> you must be the new guy. There's <laughs> nobody else here does that. <laughs> yeah, there was plenty of things that I would be doing. I, I, mean, force, I, I force him section. and Alex to actually show show their caps every time just to piss me off. And this is not an actual <laughs> habitat of people in the office because you never done that. And I had a good impact on both of you because you sounded like, oh, look at my caps. I'm like, I, I don't have any. I, like did, that. I did sort of notice when Jake had started that like he he came in and obviously he was quite musty and stuff like that. And at that point in time, like. And it's still quite a sausage fest the crowd well, but I think at that point in time there were like only like four or five girls working there. Yeah. And basically the minute like Jacob walked in, like loads of the other guys started going to the gym a lot. <laughs> Almost as if they were that like That is true. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> the moment, yeah. Yeah. Real man <laughs> yeah. like, I was just sat there going like those girls haven't come to you yet, they're not gonna. <laughs> yeah. It's like when you buy expensive, and it's from experience. Remember after photo shoot, I had a lot of questions from people like, "Was like Why is it that color?" Uh, okay. <laughs> no, about oil, of course. That was too slow. I was trying to think of something quick. Then oil, oh, sorry. Thing, yeah, oil. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and people are like, you know, when you buy an expensive car, yeah. and the only people that ask you about that car are blokes and kids. Yeah. Same story. Yeah. What gear are you using? And I'm like, I'm natural. Um, you know, it's like, how long you've been training? Can you help me with that? All blokes, not a single woman would give a shit about how you look. Yeah. Not, and that was kind of breaking point for my mind because I was like, it's actually cool that people like me for who I am and what I do rather than how I look. It was quite an empowering state because unnecessary with your face. Needed with my yeah yeah. He is right. Have you seen me without my hair? I'm like the ugliest potato on the planet. <laughs> Alex, I beat you. I just need to shave my hair and. I was thinking then when you said, "Have you seen me without hair?" And I was thinking, "Me, no, no, you've got I, hair." I have hair. Thank yeah. God for that. Yeah, Mum, thank you. It's, it's my mum's hair. If I don't have it, just what you stuck it on your head? Yes. Wow. The implants getting pretty good. Thanks. It's good hair. It, it looks natural. It was rejected in other places, but well, well, well his head is more good than that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what do I say to people who I am? Like, <coughs> they know you. I think that's what they say. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah, everyone knows Doug. Yeah. I mean, yeah. If you don't know Doug, you're just wasting your life. I actually once um, at a house party years and years ago <laughs> That's I went yeah. to the toilet and I was so pissed and so fucking stoned that I was just like, right, I'm gonna just have a bit of a sit down in here. I didn't know that at this house party the only other toilet in the house which was the upstairs one was broken and people couldn't use it. And I was just sat in there for probably about half hour, 40 minutes, just like, I'm just chilling kind of thing. <laughs> and I walked out opened the door and there was a queue of like 12 people <laughs> like through the hallway of this house waiting to get into the toilet and I just sort of looked at them and someone just went like how long do you have to take in the toilet and in a split second I was just kind of like what do I do, what do, I do? and I just went do you know who I am? <laughs> just, <"What?" laughs> that's, that's class. I'm Doug! That's it! How long? I'm Doug. Okay? Thank you. <laughs> That's a brilliant response. And I, the thing is, I walked into another room and I was like, I know I was an absolute cock there and I shouldn't have done that, but fuck it, I only came in with three friends. I'm going to talk to them. <laughs> it doesn't matter. There's still booze on That's that. how you should walk for life. I'm sorry, can you not cut in the queue? Do you know who I am? I'm Doug. Yeah, that would annoy me if you cut in the queue and said that. What if there are cut? No, I can't cut queues. That's illegal in this like, country. <laughs> pretty, <laughs> pretty much it. Right? Yeah. I know, I learned the hard way. But it depends. <laughs> it depends. It depends. Yeah, I was called a C word. And if uh, you go to like hair a... colour was a bit different in that sentence. And apparently I like to eat gravel and mud. So I went back to the queue. It was four years ago. So there are different levels of like queue anger though, aren't there? There are different levels of queue anger and it depends what kind of like, I don't know if it's a class thing or just the environment that you happen to be around at the time. So you'll go into like places where like, 
people are kind of like, they're not so bothered about what the fuck you think of them kind of thing. And if you push in the queue, they go like, fuck off, mate. <laughs> that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's like one of them. And bad. then you have like the other end of the spectrum when you have somewhere like that's quite refined and everyone there's quite middle class and nice and like that Tesco. kind of thing. And if you like sort of <laughs> Yeah, like Tesco. I mean I was thinking more like you know, sort of <laughs> all right, you're getting closer. That's very but, but like but if you get is very sophisticated. If you cut into that. if you cut into like the queue because maybe if Morrison's you, is. Camera, if you cut into a queue in those kinds of environments, you get people going like, um, excuse me, uh, would you mind awfully going back to where you're supposed <laughs> to be? Keeping your spot. That kind of thing. <laughs> but there's this weird bit in the middle, like, and it's kind of weird situations where you're in a cafe that's not nasty or nice or anything like that, but you like get into the queue and like people, rather than tell you not to, the anger is contained in just this collective Mexican wave of people just going, <laughs> I'm tutting. Yeah. I'm tutting. Yeah. Ugh. Woe, woe betide you if you do it in a place where women are there with their kids yeah. during the week. Because if you do anything like that, you are just going to get like the wrath of mums. Yeah. And like, to be fair, they're right. But like, mums are just kind of like, right, you've done something wrong. I've also got to teach this little fucker what's wrong. Any, I'm going to take you down. Anybody, <laughs> it doesn't matter if it's your mum or anybody else's mum. If mm. they tell you off, they make you feel like shit. Yeah. Yeah. It's unbelievable, <laughs> isn't it? Like, I, mean, I, 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 I love women. I think they're fucking incredible. And I think being a mother is such a strong, awesome, powerful thing to do. But, like, I still think that as a man, part of my respect for that comes from the fact that I'm terrified of it as well. Yeah. Like, if you encounter someone who's like had a child and is like committed to like bringing up that child, making that child good, you just kind of like, that's someone to be like respected. But also, as a man who's been a boy and had a mum, you go like, that's something to be feared as well. Okay. <laughs> that kind of thing. Absolutely. Mm. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Buckle down. <laughs> nah, nah. I, what I think is, and this comes down to a conversation I had uh, last week with one of my good friends and it was about being a father and being a mother mm. and of course respect to people that actually you know dedicate their life to raise a, a child you know and um, the problem is and I think this is a problem of like the times we live in Sometimes it's a bit taken, to me it's like, you know, when you become a father and it comes down to my perspective of what my dad did, um, well, I thought till I was like 20, you know, that he knew everything, you know, everyone's like, oh, your dad knows everything, he's the dad. The problem is I discovered that he had no fucking clue what he's doing. They just ring it. The only thing is, the moment I popped out on this beautiful world, he got labelled as father. That's all. That's no one, all. No one really knows what they're doing, do they? Like yeah. until that child's yeah. there, and you just have to no, like no. work it out. How the hell? How the hell can you? Even, even if you speak yes. to other parents who have done it, or like read books and stuff like that, all these like sort of like parenting manuals. The minute that child's born, you still go. Yes. I only know what I've been told. I don't actually know what I'm doing. Yeah, exactly. That's you know? the, and this gets me. This gets me to a point where sometimes people feel entitled by the fact that they are a parent and don't get me wrong it's a bit you know i understand it sometimes have like there will be parents who it's not sort of pushing an entitlement it's more a case of like i've got so much to fucking do i could really do with just getting this bit done quicker but yeah kind of thing. And but, I, I appreciate like it does disrupt the classic british queuing system sometimes but i think in those circumstances most people go like Ah, uh, fair enough. Well, I mean, one yeah, kind of thing. I understand that, but it's it's again, it's very flexible because, you know, for my problems are like nowhere near it compared to people's problem, like maybe a heart attack is a thing, a mild thing, really. Because other people have like, when I look at my life now, I'm like, it's okay, like really, my problems are not problems, and I'm always fine with you. If I'm not in the rush, um, you know, no one's dying. <laughs> Pun, not pun. Um, if you know what I mean, yeah. it's like yeah, it's fine. You know, if if there's nowhere to park and there's a 
someone in the car and then you can see like they, they really want that spot. I'm like, you know what? You have that spot. I, I don't mind. I think it's being mindful of, you know, how much do I really care about the thing I'm doing at the moment? There are times when I'm like, you know, driving and I still in a rush and I'll still let people out. I'll still let people in. Because it's not gonna make me late to anything. It's gonna take five seconds longer. I it's fine. Yeah. But being mindful about it and flexible, yeah. That's what pe people forget about. Because the amount of times I would let people in front of me in a queue because they had one item and I had like Oh ten. yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, mate, just just, just go, go on. I let a person in the queue when I went to pick up my prescription. Did you? A couple of days ago. I oh did. Oh my god. Well, that's <laughs> that's so so like, it takes them like 25 minutes to find one prescription anyway. <laughs> but the thing is, I don't mind doing that. She said she could go and pick up her kids. And I was like, that's yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah, no yeah, problem. Yeah, you, you know, you go ahead of me and everybody else agreed. That was okay. Yes, yes, yes. Also, the damage is already it. done and I'm not going to become more mentally <laughs> yeah. on the next half hour. Exactly, yeah, that's it, yeah. So I was just like, you know what, you, you, you do it, you, you go ahead. There was like a few people in front of me, they were all like, yeah, fine, do it. But then when I got my prescription, exactly as you said, like half an hour after, mm. and I left, I saw her going into a shop with no kids. And I was like, right, I'm going to make a huge assumption here. I'm going to assume that she doesn't have kids, that she hasn't picked them up, that she had a prescription half an hour before I did, and now I've gone shopping. What kind of shop was it? If it was a pawn shop, she might have sold the <laughs> Well, she didn't, she didn't have a nurse's outfit on, and it was a Tesco. So, oh, a lot of labels. That is quite, we have established that is quite... <laughs> a lot of labels coming in my head right now. <laughs> like, a lot. <laughs> we have established that Tesco's is an upper class um, establishment. We established that earlier. Well, you did. Where? Yeah, oh. cool. Okay, for well, the purposes on, of the I video. Did. We did. <laughs> Wait a minute. That's how it works with this thing. <laughs> I think it's the other moment in my life when someone said to me that you don't say Manchester, you say Manchester. And I was like, my life's not going to be the same ever again. I'm massively confused. You don't, say, going sorry, on? You don't, you don't say Manchester. It's man, 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 you say Manchester. Manchester. With a smile. Manchester. Yeah. It's like people from Manchester will say like Manchester. No, I was told it's Manchester. It is, no, it, is, it is Manchester, but it's just done very it, fast. So they just reel it off. My people that's just say... How Manchester, and it's like, mm, it's not Manchester. I mean, it's, it's definitely it's not Manchester. Manchester. And you have to do this Chester all the time. You see? Anyway, Tesco, upper class, tell me. Well, hang on, I'm coming back to that. Where did that come from? <laughs> <laughs> Which one? Manchester. Uh, ah, just... Lancashire, that's where it came oh from. Oh my yeah. god! <laughs> <laughs> from the Isle of Man, right? No, Gareth. Gavin. There's this new guy at work called Gareth. Well, he's been there quite a few months now. Um, oh, he's... But he's, he sits opposite Rob Pryor. I've got to be careful with this because yeah. I, I've spoken to everybody like as if I know them. So, well, he's, he's, yeah, you know the guy. Has he got like a teardrop beard? Great. He's, yeah, he's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's uh, the guy. I think I call him Steve. <laughs> Steve sits like... <laughs> I, I know Steve. <laughs> but I think I call him Steve and more than one... Good job, G. I'm sure he's fine. He's also a um, licensed hypnotherapist. There's a bit of info for you. He, he made you call him Steve. what you <laughs> He made you call him Steve, and now you're like confused. He used his magic. Oh shit, me. that's it, me. Yeah. Oh shit, me. He's like, call me Steve, and he just touched Did you. Did call me? <laughs> oh. How how could we oh. know? Maybe now I'll call him Kevin or something. <laughs> yeah, but only when you hear the sound of a bell and you're <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you walking in the country and you're like, What are you doing? Bark, 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 bark. <laughs> <laughs> it's all the Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And in your mind, you're saying, like, Why can't you work out what I'm saying? Where's <laughs> the dishwasher? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go outside. Can <laughs> <laughs> you come back? Does that, does that level of hypnosis 
really work because like it's obviously sort of like exaggerated like what it can be done with it in like films and TV. Can they actually make people think they're chicken? Well, it depends. Do you have a stopwatch or not? No, 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 a pocket watch, doesn't it? Well, I've got one, I've got one of them, but I haven't actually got a chain for it at the moment. Oh, that's so, not because I was just to go like <laughs> you can go like this. watch it. <laughs> I mean, I've seen people getting like like literally in front of me. People would get hypnotised. Yeah, but are they actually people or are they stooges? How am I? Well, this is the to thing. If you go to like a hypnotist, <laughs> <laughs> it's a fair question, right? Like, okay. you, How do you explain me to the like, If you go to a hypnosis show, like they ask for a member of the audience and then they choose that member of the audience, you don't. You don't know, do you? Like, if you want I mean, to get like, a hypnosis, I'll be like, and like, nah, right? And, and, <laughs> nah. The, and the hypnotist came up to you a bit before the show and said, "Oh, you're here early." What I usually do is get a plant in the audience, so they like make out these kinds of things, and you're like, "Oh, you've completely ruined the magic of this." And they go like, "How does magic sound for a hundred pounds?" You'd be like. Yeah, let's do it. I'm no, I wouldn't. I'd be like, I'm going down the the, the Daily Express, mate, Grant. How about a grand? How inconsiderate? I'll be back in a second. <laughs> How inconsiderate? That's going to my vocabulary. Um, it's, a, it's a very good word. Yeah. Inconsiderate. 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 Oh. So, uh, are you okay to what? Are you okay talking about your heart attack? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's what, 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 and my my what? brother's cancer. Jesus, man. What age were you when you had a heart attack? Nineteen. Wow. Yeah, so I was 19. First was my brother in leukemia, so I was 18. Yeah, and I gave him my bone marrow. So, in theory, in theory, I saved a man's life. Yeah. And then a year later, I had a, um, it was caused by a virus, Streptococcus C minus minus. It went from my throat to my heart, and 12 hours it just stopped. Oh my god. Yeah. It was. Do you remember it? Or yes. Was it, or is it one of the, you do remember it? Yeah. I remember it. I remember almost everything to a point where I just pass out. What's this? Wow. The heart attack. Because oh, right, okay. I've, I've, I've always... You know the darkness and mm. people say light? It's that. It, it, it felt like I'm in a dark room. Like, not in a room. I'm in an empty space. Like, just hang. Like, yeah. it's dark everywhere. And then I would see the light. And then I remember I thought to myself, um, that, you know, it's always being said to go towards the light. Yeah. What happened, the light came to me quite quickly, so it was, you know, the electric paddles that they used to um, revive you basically, just get you out of the dead state. So they hit me three times and a third time uh, got my heart back up and running. So then I just pulled up like from my bed, it literally just kicked me out because the muscles were shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that wasn't the biggest thing because they I, I could hear people saying breathe and I couldn't and the nurse looked me in the eye it's like I remember Blair it was like 12 13 people in a room I looked in the eye and I said I can't and I had I just thought I'm gonna die that was the moment I thought I'm gonna die even and though you had I died before died. this I thought this yeah. this is like game over and I had a panic attack I seen myself when I was really young I seen myself um, in my hometown when I was like a kid. Yeah. I remember when I finished high school. I remember when uh, I started my first job. So it the, was just slideshow. So when people say your life flashes before your eyes, it does. That actually actually happens. Yeah, because I never seen those images before. Yeah. Um, they must have been taken from like really deep subconscious level. Yeah. From the memory that is called out. Yeah. Without your interference. Yeah. Because that's how memory works, and I've never seen those images. I don't even remember them. I didn't know they exist in my brain. So there's the thing when life is like you know it just flashes, and, and it's kind of horrible, but you, you're not aware anymore. Like it just goes through. Um, I was quite lucky because I had no um, health problems at all. Like after seven months, I was discharged. Like after all testing, they said I'm healthy. I can go back to you know lifting. So there's no scarring. There's there's nothing. Nothing. There are like three. I, I I'm not really educated in that matter, but they You're said not really educated. Uh, <laughs> ah, like half right uh, Okay. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, um, 
There are like two strings of like fibre behind your heart. Okay. They are just there, they don't do anything. And they were intact. And you can like rip them just by falling hard on the floor. Um, and the other thing is, the doctor said, and that's why I love lifting weights, it sounds like, oh, again. Because I started to lift before. So when I was 17, my good pal, Luke, he, he was like, you need to lift, like, you know, lift weights with me, I'll teach you. So I did that before, and the doctor asked me after, have I lifted before, have I done any sports? And I'm like, yeah, I do like weightlifting and stuff. Yeah, that saved your life. Because your heart was used to very intense um, work. Mm. And I was like, damn, did you just say that lifting weights you know, saved my life? I was like, yeah. It's all muscles. It's all muscles at yeah. the end of the day. So, uh, yeah, that was the thing that kept me going for you know, five years now. That's why you find lifting weights a big thing. Just you know, spend 40 minutes, 50, any physical activity daily, like four or five days a week, you know, instead of being bored, overthinking, drinking, whatever, just go and do something. It may save your life in the future, yeah? Absolutely, well. You don't know absolutely. that? Absolutely, yeah. What? In terms of, like, that kind of thing, did it, like, make you, like, question your own mortality more or other people's, or was it kind of, like, equal? Because when my dad had a heart attack, mm. I, like, freaked out about it, and I started, like, thinking about mortality but literally everyone but my own and I think it was because I wasn't the person that had experienced that Correctly. kind of thing I was just yeah. worried about like oh when are the good people in my life going to go when mm. am I going to lose them that kind of thing so like if it's coming from yourself is it a sort of different different perspective I when I was younger um, I kind of thought I'm indestructible I thought you know I can do everything and even thinking like thinking about being hit by a car I still had this illusion in my brain, like, I'll be, I'll be fine. And after that, I was v I'm very aware of how fragile life is. Because you think about it, I was 18, I was doing sports, I wasn't like, you know, it, I, was a, I was a normal teenager that does a bit of sport, you know? And in a moment, it was like, God, done, you're done. Like, literally, just snap. Oh, thanks to a virus. All things to virus, you know, and they don't know where the virus came from. It's one of the theories someone sneezed in a, in a public transport and, you know, they didn't know they had the virus and just I just caught yeah. it and, you know, that. So it kind of got me um, to actually, and it was a great journey. Like, it mm. sounds stupid, but if not the heart attack, I wouldn't be who I am now. Mm. Because it came from being, you know, indestructible to, whoa, I'm, I'm fragile. Like, I'm just dust in this universe, you know, and you know it doesn't take a lot to you disappear. Yeah, and and from there it was a beautiful journey of realizing, you know, why the little things count. Yeah, appreciating the small moments about, you know, you wake up, you see a sun, just be be fucking grateful for it, you know, because I woke up in a hospital the next day and I looked outside the window for like five six hours for like half a day. I would just stare. It's like I couldn't experience that anymore if I would die. And I did die. So I, me and my brother, we kind of cheated death. And we both very appreciative of everything, no matter what. You know, when you sit down with family, you get into an argument. Mm. We like, that's part of life, you know. You, we wouldn't experience that if we were lucky enough. So all the bad things, we still, you can still, your, your brain automatically spins it as a good thing. So you kind of like, level everything out a bit more perspective mm. it's all about perspective because where i'm like where i'm sat and from my perspective being able to do things being able to do this you know be having like a good meal in the morning being able to do things i like i do appreciate them you know it's nice to have a ferrari and you know being materialistic there's nothing wrong with that but if you don't appreciate what you have and what you can do now, you're not going to get far. Because it's not the way to means, the journey counts, but you have to learn how to appreciate the moment of silence. Like, mm. no social media, no music, no books, no self-development, nothing. Just you and be quiet, you know? All the little things, and it, it changes massively. Like, the way you look at the world, because, you know, 70 years, that's, that's not a lot. No. It's not a lot. 
at all. Well, well that might be too much. <laughs> it yeah. might be too much. <laughs> Like, yeah. I don't. I don't mind about getting older. I know it's like a silly sort of throwaway joke and stuff like that. My fear more is like getting older and not being able to do shit. Like I'd rather still be sort of like I mean, literally at that not age. be able to do shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's too old. But you know, if you got to a point where you were like sort of like old and your body had become like decrepit to the point that like you needed like people to like help you get about and stuff like that, I I think I'd hate that because like I'm. I just find it weird that other people do stuff for you, like, to any kind of extreme. When you're growing up and your parents do things for you, and that's great. And then when you get to adulthood, like, maybe you'll have a partner or something, you do stuff for each other, you know, you look out for each other and that kind of thing. But it's not such an intense looking after. I think it's That's so why I find it weird about, like, rich people. Like, if I was rich, I wouldn't get a butler or anything like that, because I just find it fucking bizarre that someone was doing all this shit that I could just do myself, kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, I think, like, getting older, if I got to that point and, like, I needed people to, like, help me, I'd probably be a bit, like, I'm really what not it? enjoying this as much anymore, kind of thing. Not that I'd, like, just, like, jump on the Dignitas train or anything like that, but, like... It'd just be a bit like, you know, it is life, sometimes this happens kind of thing. But, like, I think I'd kind of, like, end up pining for the past. What if a bit your kids want to help life. you? Like, not because I've got older, but because physically I've become overall kind of thing. What if your kids... That's selfish. I think it's a bit selfish. It is selfish. Because but if like, you help if your you kids grow up... Hang on, can I just bring in something? Whenever somebody says somebody, something about somebody's life and being selfish, I have to jump in and say... Ultimately, I'm saying about the approach. The yeah, approach is right, okay. not him. He's okay. selfish anyway. Yeah. <laughs> They're all selfish to a point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's nothing wrong with being selfish. But what I mean is, example one, my parents spend shitloads of energy, especially we're talking about me. So there was a lot of patience involved. Mm. And I feel obligated to be with them to the end of the days, no matter what. Mm. And if my dad would be like, you know, I don't feel comfortable um, because I can't do things and it's like very, um, what's the word? It's very like, you know, you lose the self-respect in a way. Mm. You do that only if you look through the perspective of a person who can afford to have that self-respect. Because to me, the self-respect of my father would be that he would actually let me help him no matter what. Do you get what I'm saying? It's Yeah. Yeah, I do. Yeah. It, I'd be I would be very sad and heartbroken person if my father would be you know what, I don't want to do it anymore because something. I'm like, no, me, no. You know, no. Because I'm there for you. You've been there for me and now it's my time. And it's a bit borderline discussion because then it's like, what if he's uncomfortable and stuff? I because guess that. Then, yeah, because the, the other way that you could flip that is say that, yeah. yeah, he's been there for you. Now you're being there for him. Maybe he doesn't want to go on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think I would understand that. Yeah. I, I would understand that. There are always going to be two sides to that. I mean, my perspective is more a case of like, I wouldn't want to be like a burden mm. to anyone. But then again, I can see where you're coming from because the people that you've looked after may then sort of look at you and go like, no, I want to do this. So there is kind of... There's, a, I think it's very flexible again. Yeah. It depends on the situation. And um, yeah, I think it's very... Like, you can't just go and be black and white in this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can't be black and white. And we like that. Humans, Humans like, black, like, like, like black and white. This, Humans yeah. like yes or no. They're like bullion. Yeah. They're yeah. like yes or no, true or false. Because as soon as something gets grey, Mm. Then your automa your automatic you challenge you're wrong. Yeah, you your challenge. opinions and my opinions on all of this is so so far removed from you two. Mm. <laughs> so so fucked. Do tell. You know, growing up until last year, I didn't want to be here. Yeah. And I would do anything in my power to make my life shorter because I didn't want to be on this planet. Okay. So. You're looking at the guy who wanted to be on a planet and was kind of forced to yeah. leave it for a minute. It, yeah, it, it, it's, it's how bizarre. fucking it's weird. It's absolutely bizarre. Isn't it, right? isn't it totally bizarre? Yeah. From the age of 22 it, on. It mildly pisses me off. 
Yeah. Oh, I can understand it that. It fucks yeah, me yeah, off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can, I can like, understand that. Why? I want to. Yeah. Hey! Uh, I can understand But that. then we all have our own experience. Of course. Yeah. No, but you know what I mean? Like, like, I, I, obviously, with like, like we spoke about on the last video we did, like yeah, about yeah. my suicide attempt and stuff like that. Yeah. Obviously, at that point in time, I didn't want to. But I've like found like reasons to want to now, and they and and the reason I'm cool with them is because they kind of came naturally, mm. rather than I had to like dig and try and find some kind of spurious reason. So it, there is like a different perspective with that. But if you don't find anything like that particularly quickly, like with your experience, then that not wanting to be here is just going to keep going. going. Mm. And so what you sort of talking about like maybe it's like eating unhealthily and various other little things mm. to try and like minimize it it's more kind of like a slow suicide it's a slow thing. suicide you know i have to ask it's, it's a weird question to ask because you just said eating all the things and doing that and i was like was there a part of you that actually enjoyed doing all the shit because what you were doing i think it was going and what like going outside your comfort zone yeah, yeah. Mm. see what i'm doing like mm. still like it's still experience. I wouldn't classify experiences as bad or good because bad at the end. Experiences are just experiences. It's all, yeah. Again, simplifying yeah, yeah, yeah. shits is like what yeah. we like. Yeah. But did you enjoy? <laughs> did you enjoy that? Like, and it sounds really bad. Did meditation. You, did, meditation did you, is good, but it doesn't suit everybody. Yeah. You know, and this is the thing. It's the same it's exercise it's because it's, it's. This is the age-old thing. If you talk to somebody like myself, the doctor always used to say, "You have bipolar disorder. You've had it since you were 22." Of, well, before then, undiagnosed. Why? Because I, I was cutting myself in school when I was like 15 and 16. Mm. Um, why don't you just exercise? Why didn't you lose the weight? Oh, here we are. This is the age old thing. Have you tried to get a depressive to exercise? Yeah. Have you tried when you can't even be bothered to get out of bed because mm. you don't want you don't want to be here? It's just effort. Every single thing. And then you're turning around to them and going, you're 22 still. Run. Do you know what I mean? It's just like, yeah, yeah that is just not going to happen. Mm. You know, and you have to wait until your body tells you. Do you know what? So yeah. the question is, is, and it comes down from the fact I read a really good book now called Feeling Good. Oh, yeah. And um, I, as a person, I, I, you know, I meditate. Um, Everyone thinks it's like a woo-woo shit that you just do. Mm, mm, mm. No, no. What you do is just be in a moment. Try to get your brain to like the idea of being present. And that book started to like make a lot of sense when it comes to cognition of anything that we do. Simple example. Yeah. A BMW cutting in front of you. Now I know stereotypes. I do like BMWs, so uh, just put that on there. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, everyone's like the stereotypical driver of a BMW. So like, you know, he cuts in, and people automatically assume. That, that guy, oh, what a dick. I'm like, what if he's in a rush? What if he's need to pick his daughter up? What if he needs his meds? What if he's late to his mother's funeral? Be fucking mindful about it. Mm. And that's the key to cognition. Because you like, you label out without even thinking. Like, you just go in that, like, label that stuff. And what that book is, is explaining is, how do you actually maneuver the cognition of things that, that make you the way you feel because you see things, you think things, then you feel things. And I was like effectively working on breaking the cycle. God, it's hard. Yeah. It's hard. Yeah. Because most of the time you just jump in. And every time I would jump in, I was like, whoa, let's take a step back and just get into the feeling of my own, not even mind, but my, my, what I'm feeling, you know? What's out there that actually, and then I suddenly like, hey, what if that guy is in a rush? Oh boy, just complete, like, in a second, just gone. No stress, no being angry. So I wonder, have you actually kind of applied that to, to your situation? Not in a way, hey dude, read the book, you'll be fine. Mm. I'll be the worst salesman on the planet. But what made you actually change that you actually started to see like the the good side of life that it's worth you know staying here and and is it is this is, is it connected in any way your cognition of things how you how you ex 
one, express yourself, but two, how do you take in all the experiences from waking up, opening your eyes and waking up to going to work, eating, you know, showering, running, talking to people, breathing, all the things. Have, have you actually noticed, have you thought about, wait a minute, I actually started to think about things differently to how it would before, which has an impact on my mind? I think I've not tried to think about things. That's what I've tried to do. I would analyse every single situation. So, whereas with meditation, as you say, you try and you try and zone out of yourself and then get back into yourself and then relax. You observe then, nothing. More. Yeah, and then be <clears throat> be sort of very mindful of exactly what you're doing. Because I've walked in when when the wife has been doing yoga and she's gone right. That's it. It's ruined now. <laughs> because she she was in this zone and I've just stumped in and gone. Ah, da, 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 but you know. we do expect see that <laughs> in my usual yeah. way, not noticing what's going on around me. Kind of just ba, 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 and she's gone. Oh God's sake! You know, and yeah. it's but it's fine if she's mindful. She yeah. should be. It's okay. Yeah. Because there's no end goal to that. I think I've tried to not think, not to overthink. I had to do something because I was huge. I had to do something. I had to get rid of the weight. So I think it was, for me, I didn't think. Whereas before I would have thought, oh God, I'm going to have to exercise, I'm going to have to do this, but I can't get out of bed. Why can't I get out of bed? Just because of this, because I'm useless, because of this, because, you know, and then I feel guilty and then everything else. Do you know what I mean? That wraps up with it. I just kind of went, do you know what, solid. I'm just going to, I'm just going to try it. I'm just going to do it and see what happens. Just do it? Yeah, pretty much. Well, something yeah, about that. It's cliche, isn't yeah. it? It's very, 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 very cliche. It's very cliche, but it there works. Is, there is something about that. What about you? Um, well, I was just thinking, you quoted the Nike slogan, so YouTube are going to demonetise this channel now. It's demonetised anyway. Fair enough. <laughs> Thanks. I don't have to say anything back <laughs> No, I, a similar thing. Like, I, when I was sort of like trying to come back from stuff, like, I was, I just tuned out of most stuff, because otherwise I was going to fucking explode. You do. So I had to, like, switch off for a long time until I kind of started to naturally feel a bit better and then I can start thinking about stuff again. But it's very, you've got to be careful what you think about. Oh, you say, it, I'm not going to talk about myself. Oh, you, you have to be mindful, mindful of your thoughts. Yeah. It was Absolutely. also um, literally about four weeks before I started a new job mm. that I did it. Um, and so whilst going through that period of not thinking about stuff, I suddenly had something completely fresh and new to kind of like throw myself to, into. To get, to dive so in, it was yeah. kind of like, I can get into this, and none of this other shit is associated with this. That's that's. And like I could, yeah. I could sort of like ride that wave until I felt better, and then I started to like be like, okay, now I can slowly and gradually analyze some other bits that I need to work on. Um, like that. I think. Have you noticed a similar pattern? Of both of you, we do did. You stop fucking thinking, and you started to be mindful of what you're doing. Mm. You were thinking about a new job. You were thinking about exercising. You were mindful of what you're doing, mm. and what I believe is being mindful of what you do. Because don't get me wrong, we are, I I don't agree with concept of society as in I think we are individuals, mm. and when we put in a in a huge venue together, we call society. Uh, society is made of every single individual and one by one. So I like to think we're part of a society, but everyone's different. In one aspect we're the same. I do overthink. I used to before. Mm. I had chaos in my mind, like the, just noise. I would call it noise. Mm. It was constant yapping, not like, you know, Alzheimer's. Oh, you're, you're going to try and explain that for me. I, I totally understand what you're saying. And yeah. I had the same <laughs> problem, and it started to get I to... Sleep. Yeah, if, I, never, I never slept. Yeah, you couldn't constant, relax. If it, wasn't, if it wasn't shouting, constant shouting, it was the sound of white noise. Yeah. It's the only other way noise. I can describe it. Just noise. If I walked into a room, I would walk into a room, I would close the door, I would close the curtains, I would just sit there with my hands on my ears. And, it's nice. and nothing, nothing could stop it. Mm. Nothing could it, stop it. It, I, I, you know. it did. Something stopped it. Oh no, it's still there. Oh yeah, it will be there. <laughs> it's know, like yeah. It goes but away. I think the difference, I think the, the the difference is now is that I've accepted a lot more of what I am and Let who it I be am, there. you know, rather That's than trying key. to sort yeah. of hide it, 
you know, and stuff like that over the years. I've just kind of just turned around and gone to people, well, do you know what? I've got a very, very morbid sense of humour. Mm. I'm very self-deprecating. If you can't laugh at it, I'm sorry, but that's yeah. me. You know, yeah, yeah. And, and kind of be it, the self-deprecating part is so important to me. Is this it going? That's, yeah, yeah, I understand. And that's the thing with that, isn't there? Because like, you do have to be yourself. And I think in certain, certain, um, certain social situations, you will kind of go like, all right, this might be a bit much for these people, so I'll, you know, tone it down a little bit and stuff like that. But when it comes to stuff, no, wait, let me finish before you disagree. And then I, just, I just wave that, nah, I'm going to tone it down. probably going to agree. But with, something, <laughs> probably. but with something like that, yeah. even though it might be a bit too brash and a bit too much for some people, you can't tone that one down at any point because you're like, this is what's fucking like, keeping me alive. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, absolutely. that's the thing. Yeah, yeah. Like in certain situations, I'll be like, "All oh, right, I'll uh, I'll tone down my um, maybe like my volume or something like that." Because mm. I can be really loud and like over the top and stuff like that. Yeah, but like be loud. With, in certain situations, I'll be like, "I'll be a little bit quieter," and you know, maybe I won't do the whole like because you know when I'm with mates, I take piss out of them. That's my thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but like. I won't like well, go into a new do. situation with strangers and like make jokes about them instantly in the same yeah. way, and I'll tone that kind of thing down. But like, I'm also kind of like, there are other things I do that I have to do, yeah. and I will not fucking stop for other people. Well, there's another one swearing. Like, yeah. In some situations, I won't swear. Yeah. And in others, I just do like all the time. Yeah. Like I'm a real potty mouth. But like that one I can sort of cut out, but like other times, you know, and, and like, but in any situation I still have to like be me and the honest version of me because if I'm not, then I'm not going to get through that or any other moment. So like even if it's just something so simple as like going to dinner with some people, you can't cut off that kind of thing. And I will take the piss out of myself in front of anyone. Like, and you were saying about being self-deprecating and having yeah. a slightly dark sense of humour. Yeah. Um, and I'm not too bothered about doing that like around anyone. Like Maybe some of the themes of jokes I'll take away, but I always snap react to something if it's there. Because if I don't do that, then I'm not doing me the right way. What about... Okay. Yeah. Why are the shades of grey in here? That's the greatest question I've been asked. Oh, I don't read those books. Well, yeah, I know, he's alright. <laughs> <laughs> the question is, because it sounds to me like the moment we enter, in, like, we, we just enter like a social situation, or whatever it is, we automatically assume we have to give up a part of us which is unacceptable because we have to mm. be us all the time. Yeah. Well, well actually, the, so actually, the first thing I do when I enter a social situation is, in my head, just go, Ah! <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's like, what if that is I just, I just want to push somebody over <laughs> until they fall on the floor and then go, he's the weird one, he's the weird one, it's not me. And then that automatic, that last, I just want to do something that just makes... Because I think, as soon as I walk into somewhere, the people are looking. Yeah. So I walk into somewhere with my head shut and just kind of go, do, 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 do. and it's that's not, it's, it's, and it's not, it's nobody's not, even noticed I've walked that's, in. It's not, that's <laughs> their cognition. It's not, it's you not just arrogance. slap it. It's, it's not arrogance, arrogance. Yeah. it's insecurity. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's not because I think people are like, oh, there's John. Not that at all. It's the total thing of, look what he's wearing. Oh, look at it. What a stupid thing. Do you know what I mean? And things yeah, like yeah. that. And it's just, and my brain constantly, you can control that. All the time. You can control that. I like a little bit of it. You know how to, I, okay, mm. this is very like. I think it's healthy. To yeah, keep I think some of it. I think it is. Yeah, I think it's a bit healthy to keep some of it. Because then you like because it's still like it's still part of you. Brain is still part of you. Yeah. What people do, and I would notice when you were talking about cat, is no, you try to control things in your mind. It's not the way. What I did, um, you know, Headspace app. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I started to watch videos with that guy, and it was like very counterintuitive to actually. He, he was like, observe things, but don't react. And it comes down to the fact, like, I remember the times when I would go to the gym, and it would be like, the first thought I had was like, oh, people are watching. Yeah. And then I was like, whoa, wait a minute, where's that thought come? I'm not talking. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be quiet. Hello, Kitty Mew. 
you know what I mean? It, it was just this this part of like not forcing to have control over your mind. It's about actually letting it be. But not listening is very difficult yeah. because you have to be very aware. That's why I say be mindful, then you have to be comfortable with the, the quiet because then you're in peace with yourself. And your mind will scream at first. It always does because your brain doesn't like present. It likes future, it likes past because you can dwell on it. My brain can't remember the past. Drug and alcohol for the win, yeah, woo! I'm sure club. <laughs> I, got, um, I got drug searched at a music festival. Did you? Well, you do look yeah. like a massive dealer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, uh, massive. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I look amazing. like a breadcrumb dealer. <laughs> the thing is, I didn't have anything on me because I don't do drugs anymore. But, like, I got really confident, and the security people didn't like how confident I was, so they were just getting really aggressive with me. Mm. Like, because they were just like, right, you've got one chance, tell us what you've got. And I'm like, not got anything. Like, <laughs> right, like one more song. chance, one more chance. Really? And I was just like, I've not got anything. They went, right, well, you're going to have to come out to our search tent. And I just turned around to Heather, who looked a bit worried. And I just went, don't worry, I'll be back in a minute. Wait by that tree. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll I'll fly. Fly. I'll I get like, asked to like different people. And going? each of them are just going, like, you've got one chance, tell us what you've got. And they're getting more aggressive and more intimidating. And I'm just there just going like, I've not got anything. That's bad. I've That's not got anything. And one of them just went like, you're not being very cooperative. I went, I've answered truthfully to every question, which by no, the same is not, one no, question that's, that's that a, you've asked. So I'm being yeah. extremely cooperative. That's a very bad security team. Yeah. And I got taken to the back and eventually it got to a point where I was, I was still confident, but I was getting a bit frustrated. And, and finally this, this girl goes to me like, right, this is your final chance because if you have anything, you are straight out that gate. And I went, look, I haven't got anything. Same as I've told all of your friends. Right, so I'm happy to go through with this search because I am cooperating, and the fact of the matter is, I can't magic drugs out of my ass, and neither are you going to. <laughs> and she just looked at me and went, like, it's gonna be like that, is it? I was like, like what? I'm gonna be searched, and I'm gonna you know be fine. You have done, you so can... I went in, the guy searched me, and found nothing. Hang on. And oh, you've like, ruined it now, it's, it's gonna build up, we're gonna build up that bit, yeah. we're gonna build up that bit, right now, you spoiled it. You literally just slide it in but there like, and the then guy, search nothing. The guy, the guy, the guy like searched all my stuff and searched me and just and I ended up having a nice bit of a chat with it and as yeah. we walked out he was just like yep yeah, enjoy your festival kind of thing and he was going like I don't know why you've been brought in here because everyone else who's been brought in here has had eyes like golf balls and a hat <laughs> carrying and I was just like yeah well you know I've literally had two pints up the road but I can tell you why I was taken in there and it's because when we walked past the sniffer dog the sniffer dog sniffed me because as we walked past I farted. <laughs> and that's what set off that whole chain of events. <laughs> it took his one oh, unconscious fart. God. <laughs> you want that again? There was one point where one of them was just going like, if you haven't got anything, why did the dog sniff you? I just went, dogs like me. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. That, that's the thing. Even if it is a highly trained dog, dogs like they're me. still a dog. They're still yeah, a yeah. robot, right, mate? <laughs> yeah, right. Like, How's it going, fella? Like, oh, you're not bad, <laughs> Then he took the drugs off. And, and they hated me. <laughs> the dog was like, oh, I doubt it's going, hey, I don't know yeah, yeah. whatever. The cats were like, we, we absolutely hate you. They'd walk into the kitchen, find the glass and just push it over. She'd be like, yeah, you've got to clean yeah, that up now, yeah. you know, and yeah, literally, they would they would do the most diabolical things. And it was... It was Spells in the kitchen. In the name of love. I mean, she, she doesn't really bite. She will nibble at times. And if she's in the Hello. middle of something, she might be like, you asking for it. Kind yeah. of thing. Like, she's not aggressive in any way. But, like, if she does bite you, it's the weirdest thing in the world because it's just kind of like. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a puppy bite.